I want to ask you, first of all, when you look back on your lifetime, where do you think we are now compared to where we were, for example, when you were in high school? Like, do you feel that you've seen a maturation of, of women's rights and women's success in society? Or have you seen something worse? <laughs> It's a tough question because I don't think it's been a completely linear progression. I think on some scales, women are doing much better. And on others, I've been pretty disappointed to see ways in which we've been set back that I didn't and wouldn't have imagined in high school. Well, um, let's talk about the advances first, mm -hmm. in your view. Uh, how are women better off today than they were, let's say, in 1980. Let's just let's use a, a. I mean, I'm just trying to get a rough paradigm of like 40 years or so. Yeah. So, I think that women are better off in terms of options for building what feels like a good and meaningful life. Um, you know, I'm in my late 30s and I don't have kids. I look around at my peer group. Many of us don't have kids by choice. Um, and some of us don't have kids by a choice that's kind of also like a life circumstance, right? It's that we didn't find the partner we wanted and so, you know, didn't have kids because those things weren't set up. Um, a lot of women that I know are having kids through the amazing technologies that now exist to help women have kids much later in life um, and are therefore able to build families with partners they found later you know, on their own terms. There's so much more variability, I think, in, in what a good life can be, and not just how we can individually make those decisions, but how we can make them in communities of people that will provide a sense of mutual support and shared experience. Um, and that's huge. I think that's really fantastic. And, you know, certainly for me has, has brought kind of pretty unparalleled positive outcome to my life. I think we're much more thoughtful now about things like sexual violence, workplace sexual harassment. Um, you know, the Me Too movement was kind of the culmination of a lot of that. But I also think the Me Too movement was the outcome of many, many years of feminist work to broaden conversations around sex and power. Uh, and so that stuff is much better than it was when I was in high school. And when I when you look at, for example, the proportion of women in a graduating college or graduate school. Women are now the clear majority of the educated elites. Um, they are earning more than men in a whole variety of, of areas. And, and some people say at this point, in fact, that, and I, I'd like you to address it. In fact, so far as we're looking now at, at, at trends, we're seeing that men are in trouble uh, more so than women. Um, uh, having difficulty holding jobs, being in the workplace, uh, rates of depression, suicide, mental health, et cetera, et cetera. Um, do you think there's a point at which, is there conceptually a point at which feminism could say, you know, we've done, we've done everything we can and maybe we should think about the men at this point. Maybe, maybe there are balancing uh, factors here. Well, how would you respond to that? Yeah, so I'm guessing you're talking in part about Richard Reeves' new book, which is quite good. It's called Of Boys and Men, where he kind of gets to, the, to these issues. And I um, interviewed him and found, uh, read his book, found it really convincing. You know, to me, the feminist movement that I, as I understand it, and that I, as I try to kind of practice my feminism, is not a zero sum movement of, you now I'm going to really mix metaphors, but you know, there's a single pie and women are just trying to get a bigger piece of it. That's part of it. But it's also saying like, we can make more pies, right? There are many different ways that uh, I think feminists are trying to build a more equal society. And, and one thing that feminists have long pointed out is that while women's roles have radically expanded, everything from how we dress, right? I'm wearing pants as, as I'm talking to you. That's not traditional feminine dress to the kinds of jobs that we go into. Um, to the ways that in which we find purpose in our lives have all expanded into traditionally male spaces. Women have a lot more fluidity and, and I think a lot more choice. And what we haven't seen is men expand in traditionally, into traditionally female spaces and roles in the same way. So yes, we have seen men increase the amount of childcare that they do, increase the amount of at-home labor that they do. 
but not nearly to the extent that women have increased our out of the home labor, right? And still not nearly as much as women are doing. Um, we've seen a lot of women, you know, women like me find purpose in life in spaces outside of child rearing, which for women has been the kind of traditional place in which we were finding, finding meaning. Um, and I don't think for men, unfortunately, that has shifted nearly as much. I think for men, meaning and purpose is still very much tied into provision for a family, into breadwinning, into respect from a partner and children. And I think because of you know a, a whole slew of factors, which are probably too complicated for this podcast, but you know some cultural, many of them economic, there are a lot of men for which that's no longer um, kind of a, a sole route to finding that sense of meaning. 